In this short video, I will be discussing the paradigm shift in the way we design a flow path. Specifically, I'll be talking about the design of centrifugal compressors for a centrifugal chiller. If you're like most engineers, uh, your system has a representation as in this process diagram, and you are designing a specific component, the centrifugal compressor in this case. As such, uh, the centrifugal compressor's design is started with specification of boundary conditions, shown here as the inlet and the outlet. Of course, typically, there is a system to which uh, customer uh, specifications are chosen. And these revolve around other pieces of equipment, in the case of the chiller, a, uh, the heat exchangers. And that, therefore, means boundary conditions on the customer interface specifically, the delivery point of water inlet and outlet to the evaporator, and the customer interfacing cooling water boundary condition. So in the traditional design, one gets a nominal operating point of the system, performs an analysis, and hands off that boundary condition specification to a flow path designer. If the design engineer for the flow path is lucky, they have a software that enables them to generate many designs quickly. And here we show the generation of uh, preliminary designs from boundary conditions, evaluation through mean line analysis, and blade shape optimization through uh, through flow analysis. Of course, there's lots of other components in the analysis-led design process that aren't shown, including CFD, rotor dynamics, and bearing design. But this gives you a flavor of traditional design, and there's nothing wrong with this. This is good practice if you truly have a single design point and maybe your system is more or less isolated from a larger system. But when we have a larger system and there are a range of design points or operating regimes, we need something more advanced. This is the traditional way of organizing the design process into disciplines where oftentimes the communication happens at design meetings and communication happens across walls, sometimes uh, having to uh, be iterative in nature. Such a strategy, which is outdated, is not only costly, but isn't guaranteed to lead to an optimum design. We think there's a better way. We think that we can leverage uh, automated design tools to design equipment for the entire range of operation for which we want it to operate. With modern tools and engineering practice, we are able to simulate in incredible detail our true system or cycle so that we can completely map out its operation. And more so, we can map out the particular points that we're interested in and assign weights to the ones that are really important and find each of them on the map and find the boundary conditions that are very important to us for the subcomponent of interest. And more specifically, we don't have to be limited to a certain number of points. We can choose as many as we want. So we have a, a representation shown here of our system and uh, we can analyze the system in detail. When I speak of system simulation, I'm not talking about a simple cycle simulation like we might have done at the university. I'm talking about where elements such as the compressor, flow path is simulated in detail. The heat exchangers could be simulated via detailed heat transfer, as for example here, where the pipe network in the shell and tube heat transfer is simulated, and it's all coordinated by a automated workflow system. This automation environment not only uh, provides coordination among the co-simulation environments, but also provides automated optimization algorithms and even AI capabilities. The resulting integrated design process executes the system cycle simulation and from those uh, points runs the design and executes analysis of each of the design to determine each design suitability for a particular set of operating points. The result is that we have several designs that are generated and automatically filtered out by the workflow. And uh, here we show uh, a baseline design and a optimum design, with several other designs being shown. And the point is that the optimized design here, which is uh, shown in the red, maximizes 
IPLV performance. It's important to emphasize that this design did not get generated by designing at the 100% point. It got generated by designing across the entire operating range of the chiller. And this can apply to any system of interest. Whether it's a chiller, we can uh, constrain ourselves to the typical IPLV ASHRAE uh, HRI standard, or we can use as many points as we want and generate a design based on those particular operating points. And we can even apply this methodology outside of designing uh, turbo machinery for chillers, but we can do it for the automotive sector or the aerospace sector or any other application we want to. What we're doing is generating designs to be optimized for the intended system operating range.